The story that takes the cake, the wedding cake to be precise, because it's about a bride who got her groom down the aisle under very false pretenses. Here's my exclusive interview with the blushing bride, the first time she has spoken on television, but now she's blushing for a very different reason. Something borrowed, something blue, but something at this wedding was not quite true. This is the crazy love story of Jessica Vega and Mike O'Connell, two kids from upstate New York in their early 20s. They fell hard for each other, irresistibly attracted. And something magnetic when we actually met happened, we couldn't get enough of each other. It was perfect. The two talked about marriage, but then there was trouble in paradise. Money problems, the pressure of a new baby, and for a while they broke up. A lot of things made us butt heads because our personalities are pretty strong regardless. In her first television interview, Jessica tells 2020 she was so desperate to keep her man, she made a decision that would make headlines. Oh, I felt like if I didn't have some way to get his attention momentarily, that's it. So she told a big lie about the big C. She told Mike she was dying of cancer. The diagnosis, acute myeloid leukemia. She said she had just months to live. Isn't there any other way to get his attention besides telling him you're dying of cancer? I'm the mother of his children and he wouldn't call me. Jessica showed him a letter from a doctor. It said she was dying. Did the ruse work? Did he come back? He insisted that I moved him right away. So it worked, mm -hmm. the lie. Mm -hmm. Jessica says she expected Mike would keep her terrible news private, but he didn't. So how many people did you tell you had cancer? Michael and the, the immediate family only. And friends. Yeah. So what are we talking, 5, 10, 15 <clears throat> people? We had a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. So 30? 100. 100, 100 people? 100 plus, mm -hmm. yeah. Soon the lie had taken on a life of its own, and Jessica says she was starting to regret it. I could have woken up any day and told Michael the truth, but I was a coward. Did you think any of this through? I mean, what did no, you expect was going to happen? it was, was not premeditated. I know, but not. you must have thought, okay, at some point... No. Well, she was doing everything she could to keep up the charade. She cut off her hair and wore a wig at her wedding to make it look like she'd had chemotherapy. And get this, did you pretend to go to cancer treatment? Oh, uh, maybe, or? what, like three yeah, or four times at max? Yeah. She would have her mother drop her off at the doctor's office. What would you go do? Nothing. Just sit there. When people began donating things for the wedding, Mike was touched and called the newspaper, suggesting they do a story about the community's generosity. He goes, hey, guess what? There's going to be an article about our wedding. And I was like, in my, to myself, my inner monologue, I'm like, oh my God, I cannot get out of this now. I have, I have to choose. What am I going to do, live a lie? Doyle Murphy reported her heartbreaking story in the local paper. The doomed bride-to-be getting fitted for a dress. The brave couple kissing as they got a marriage license. The article prompted even more donations. The people were coming out of the woodwork. It was kind of amazing. Soon family, friends, and complete strangers, many who had lost loved ones to cancer themselves, were beating down her door, bearing gifts, including some who were so determined, Jessica and Mike said they wouldn't take no thank you for an answer. I went into that wedding shop with the full intention to pay for the dress myself. They wouldn't allow me to. I tried very hard to tell them, I have the money for it. I will pay for this myself. But you still took it. She could have said, yeah, you know what, no, I gotta stop this. A hotel manager who lost her husband to cancer gave them the best room, the jacuzzi suite, and sent up flowers, chocolate-covered strawberries, and champagne. A jeweler whose son was a survivor of cancer provided the rings. If there was more that we could have done, we would have done it. You got a free wedding dress. You got free rings. Those are all You got fun. a free honeymoon. You got free airfare to Aruba for the honeymoon. Well, it wasn't free. Um, flowers hair and makeup for you and seven bridal attendants. Right. Their perfect day came in May of 2010. Yeah. A raucous outdoor wedding in Wallkill, New York. But even as she sobbed her vows, Jessica was still lying. As I become your wife, I want you to know the day I'm no longer physically here, I will always kiss you goodnight. 
even during this lovely wedding, you're still lying. Mm -hmm. During the vows, yeah, because that was part of, we decided to write personal vows and I had to mention that. In hindsight, some of their benefactors say they were a little surprised to see the bride with just months to live partying like there was no tomorrow. But Jessica says her big lie had actually been eating away at her. I was miserable every day because I knew I was living a lie. So every day that I woke up, I'm like, I got to figure out a way to make this lie a reality. Jessica says she began to believe the only way out was to actually die. And I just didn't want to be alive anymore at that point. Did you actually wish you really did have cancer? I didn't wish I had cancer. I wish that I could figure out a way to just be gone. So that way, at least I didn't have to face the reality of how many people I hurt. People are going to have a hard time believing that, Jessica, when they look at you on that wedding video, yucking it up at your wedding, <laughs> dirty dancing with Michael, Just getting, it, yeah. That's one thing. If you someone, don't look like a woman who's, you know, struggling with suicidal re regret with over the any, lie she told. That's one thing I have to say about that is, I regret what I did to people, but I, I don't know any female in the earth that would be depressed on their wedding day when they were doing that kind of wedding. Like Some of Mike's friends had been whispering their doubts. They would be like, dude, something's not right. And I would flip out on them. But not long after their donated honeymoon to Aruba, O'Connell says he too began to have a nagging suspicion that his wife was healthier than she claimed. He pulled out that doctor's letter she had shown him, the one that said she was dying called the doctor and gave them her name and her social security. And they asked for the letter, so I scanned it and emailed it. And they said, what is this? And I said, oh boy. The good news? His new bride wasn't dying of cancer. The bad news? She never had been. The whole thing was a hoax, part of an epidemic of cancer fakes across the country. A Valley woman accused of lying about having breast cancer turned herself into authorities this morning and used that money for a breast augmentation. She said she was diagnosed with stage two brainstem glioma. Faking cancer to scam thousands of dollars in favors and money. So what do you feel at that point, anger? I was enraged. Word quickly spread that Jessica's imminent death had been greatly exaggerated. I said, how the hell did this happen? I was just floored. I mean, I couldn't, I didn't believe it. Once he knew his wife would live, Mike dumped her and made another call to the newspaper. The public punishment began immediately. Turns out she's perfectly healthy, and now she's been indicted for duping the community. Tabloids, television, and internet scorning her as a shameful sicko, a gold-digging bridezilla. And the sentence, a bit of a surprise. Jessica traded her white dress for an orange jumpsuit when she was arrested and spent 50 days in jail. She says the nights away from her two children were the worst. I miss my kids a lot. I'm never going to be away from them ever again. That's the only thing that I've accomplished. I know I, I know I messed up really bad, but I'm a good mom. She paid back more than $13,000. I'm going to have to deal with this for the rest of my life because I did it and it's not something that's just going to go away. No, you're a felon. Mm -hmm. I'm a convicted felon. I had probation for five years. But things are looking up for her now. Her husband, Mike, has taken her back. I tried to hate her. Just, it was an, it was an, it was an act. You can't help who you love. She does understand it'll be many anniversaries before some people are ready to forgive. So how many of those people we see at your wedding dancing and drinking and celebrating? How many of those people do you still speak to? None. Fortunately, since she's cancer-free, she has the rest of her life to make amends.